Hello, welcome back to Barås in Sweden. We are live for the knockout sprint here today. We've already had the qualification. We have just in the last couple of hours had the quarterfinals as well. And we are ready for the semifinals and the finals for both the men and the women to see who will take home the medals for the knockout sprint. It's going to be fast. It's going to be furious for all of the races today. There's only two that make it through to the final from every single semi-final and it is going to be absolutely tight on the line for we hope all of these races really looking forward to a fantastic afternoon of racing we've had a opportunity to take a look at some of the courses and we're going to be here in this part of Barros just the not exactly the center but really close to the center it's got a lot of characteristics of a city sprint um, and this is our view of the run-in and uh, where we've got this arena with our spectators uh, watching out for their favorite runners to come through and hopefully be the first to the finish line and usually compared to recent knockout sprints is actually quite a long run-in quite a lot of uh, spectating that can happen so it's going to really really about those who have the the strongest legs right at the end of this course and after having raced four races today by the time if you get to the final you're really going to be very very tired so let's have a look then in a bit more detail um, at the terrain we've got some great uh, aerial shots of, of the area we're right by this church um, and Jonas maybe you can tell us about what this area what kind of characteristics this area has well, it's, uh, it's different compared to the individual sprint, uh, which was more in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. And uh, this morning they had the qualification, which actually had some forest orienteering also in the quarterfinal. Uh, but as you mentioned before, now it's more like a city sprint again. It's many decisions to take. This actually is quite similar to the individual sprint. Mm -hmm. You often have two or three options, two of them okay, one you shouldn't take. And uh, many decisions you are o occupied like you have something to do all the way around. I think the finish, as you mentioned, quite physical. So from the second last control, third last control to the finish, it's actually not so many chances anymore to make a difference. And you have a lot of these sections um, in the middle, these kind of courtyard sections or garden sections in the middle of some of these uh, bits of houses. And you really have to be very distinct knowing exactly what you're looking for when you get in there because there's loads of detail on the map. There's quite a lot of um, kind of little steps here and there and everywhere. A little bit of flower bed that's actually quite uh, tricky to, to see. But uh, let's talk you then through the course. We're going to start with the, the uh, semi-final for the men. And you see the first control is a very easy one. Yeah. You get some time to get into the map reading then uh, route choice to second control and then we have the runner's choice there with three different options so the runners will choose their own options two minutes before the start and then execute their own options the red blue or green one uh, then at control five it's a kind of a change in the terrain you have a bit more time there you get some time of course it's a route choice to control six but you get some time to breathe or not to breathe but at least to relax your head a bit you you have one once you have decided it's quite uh, a long way to go and then in the end as i mentioned before from control 11 there's actually not so many different options so uh, there it will be quite physical to the finish so if you are behind that control 11 it will be very tough to get in contact again yeah, it will be tough, but there are route choices to make from 9 to 10 and 10 to 11. So if you're all kind of behind and feeling like you need to take a risk, then there is the opportunity to do that. Um, I think we're going to have a look at some of the different options uh, in a little bit more detail. So this is uh, this school here you can see that there is uh well you're saying it's quite a different uh, route um and this is actually the women's control i think so they have different controls here the women's course is slightly shorter but you have these options of of going one way around or the other way around and for me it looks like the red one is shorter um yeah there's actually a third option you could go uh, just after the number five there to the north into this and then uh, go east on the building again Mm -hmm. So there are three options on this route here. There's another one, you see it's control 7 to 8. You have the red option and the blue option here. And that's kind of typical for this course. Um, it's kind of tricky there in between. You have to find your way, you have to find the fast way. Even here, there would be a 
third option if you go to the blue and then in the middle you can go to the east just here and take up the stairs there in between. I think that's a yeah, third we thought option, that which one was, We thought that one, I think, was maybe the quickest of all of them. Uh, this is a leg on the final, by the way. This is not on the semi-final. So we're looking, jumping ahead there to the final for this risk route choice. Um, so that is uh, one of the ones that's gonna they're going to have to contend with later on in the afternoon. Um, we have a look at the semi-finals here. It was the top three to make it through from the quarterfinals to the semi-finals. And though, so the top three in uh, quarters one and two have joined together to make semi final one. At this point, we didn't really see too many surprises in the quarterfinal, but what I really want to do is uh, we will maybe try to mention at some point some of the uh, those who missed out in the qualification because there were um, specifically in the men's uh, a few people who uh, we would have maybe expected to qualify who didn't. Uh, Daniel Hoodman, um, Joey Hadorn, Yannick Mikels all missing out, but uh, we will uh, talk through these three. They've already picked their options. Um, they picked those two minutes ago, or maybe one minute ago, and now this is the lineup. And uh, we've got uh, Tim Robertson, of course, took a medal um, two days ago in the sprint. He's got full of lots of confidence there, and we just can't see him yeah. quite on, off the the, uh, the edge of the shot there. But we've got um, three Norwegians in this uh, semi-final. I think that shows really um, the, the pedigree of the Norwegians. Okay, there they go, immediately looking at the map, we've managed to see Thomas Krivda straight out there, and it, we, as we said it was quite an easy number one. And then there's a little bit more kind of, you could almost see some of them were just going to follow and some of them were actively making the decision, maybe the ones who got there first. That's kind of a little nervousness at the start, but they ultimately all go the same way. So of these six, only two then through to the final. That is it, it's a really, really brutal. You've got to be in the top third or you will not make it any further. So at this point, there was an opportunity to go, you could have gone the other way up by a little uh, track, which, uh, or kind of like wiggling through some of the buildings. But I think this option is quite good and then you go around there you have to attack the control from the east. Um, it's kind of special here because uh, earlier in earlier competitions you have often seen that the runner's choice is right from the start, the first controls. Here you have two controls and then the runner's choice options start here. You can see Ooh. most of the runners, they choose A. Mm -hmm. um, that was actually a bit of my expectation because I think when you choose this your own option it's often you pick the one that seems easiest to execute maybe mm -hmm. because it's so hard to compare then on how especially fast they here are. where there's so many paths yeah. going everywhere yeah so you you choose the one where is there there are like fewest possible traps and yeah. stuff like this so it i think a looks quite e kind of easy to execute and uh, for me that's bit the reason maybe because why everyone chose a no, almost everyone. <laughs> almost everyone. So they've punched that. Uh... Mm -hmm. Now they were backing up there. Now at control. Ah, uh, yeah. So they messed up then because that first control is on the other side of the fence. So they all read it wrong and they all went down there and had to turn around and go back again. So good for Krivda. Good for Krivda. Yeah, exactly. You've got to read your control descriptions to know it's on the other side of the fence. So now they all back around and they go there. And could this be advantage to Krivda here? Or no, I think they they, they punched it, right. it, but they because it's through no, no, the fence. I think it, it's the it's the green part there and not the fence. So everything okay? So that they're all together at this control here. Oh yeah, it's like open area. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> I was <laughs> the controls went out when we were running it. Okay. So after the choice. I mean, at this point, you know, you see that they're back together again. The, the choice isn't really meant to um, 
kind of split them up. You're not really meant to have a penalty by choosing the wrong time, but I, I think it always, always there to make people do their own orienteering, making sure they uh, choose their own routes here. As you can see, Tim Robertson making yeah, a, taking a risk, maybe. I think it's good. I was talking about earlier. Um, let's see, he was faster. Uh, to get back to your what you said before, of course, it's it's kind of to to force them to read the map mm -hmm. by themselves because, of course, they don't know which other option that took. And interesting here, you see that Robertson's route mm. choice was very good. So now he has a gap of about three or four seconds. And the f yeah, it will be tough for him to keep that gap, but at the same time, the others have to push a little bit harder to get in contact again. And it's always easier to be in the lead. You can kind of run at your own speed. You can have control. Yeah, so Tim Robertson leading the way then, Matthias Kibberts in second, Thomas Krivda in third. Then we've got the uh, three Norwegians all together chopping and changing. Mm -hmm. And now from this control, there's a route choice again. So you see that Kibbutz backed out again. He will head to the big street there, running to the left around. Um, I think they're both quite similar. See here, come okay. together again. Mm -hmm. And I think you're really starting to get a sense of the pace that they're going through this, especially as they're going around these corners. I mean, it's absolutely brutal, the pace. It's punishing here for these six men, these six athletes who are doing it at this speed and also having to do the orienteering at the same time. And you see really often how you have some small decisions to take. It's kind of micro choice going to the left or to the right. And here it's really not about seconds. It's about meters. It's mm -hmm. about your position in the in the pack, because in the end it's very important to not be... I think if you're the last one of those six, it's very difficult in this physical end to get and pass the other ones to get in the second position that takes you to the final. Yeah, you really want to be uh, leading the pack at this point. They've got to go through these uh, through the barriers here to go um, around. The GPS is just lagging a little bit, so they're already on their way to then to control number 10, taking the western route. That was maybe an opportunity to kind of take a risk, potentially. Um, and then we'll see them at this. Uh, here we go. This is the 10th control. From different directions, Kibbutz, Robertson, Krivta, and ah. then the three Norwegians still. So you couldn't really gain too much time on a different route choice, I think, there. And then interesting again, they would chosen not to, you could back out and go down the steps, you can just see in the far corner, but they've gone around, which we think uh, is better, I think, uh, this one, and they will have to avoid these barriers that have been put into place. But this really was the last option to choose differently. I think it's it's a bit far, faster to the last one to go to the right, but let's see here, it's Kibbutz, it's Robertson. And you see here, the gap is quite big already. You see here, one of the Norwegian runners decided to go the other way around. And this is the, you've got to weigh up in your mind whether you want to turn around at the control and waste a couple of seconds turning around or you want to go straight through the control, you know, touch free punching, you've got to yeah, do that. And of course he knew the others were taking the option to the right, so he had to take a risk there. and. It was his only chance, more or less, to get yes, in contact again. exactly. It was the only chance. So Matthias Kibbert here and Tim Robertson. We've also got one of the Norwegians. I couldn't see who it was. Uh, and uh, Thomas Krypter. Here we go. Here is the fight then for the line. It's only going to be the top two to go through to the final. Who is going to make it? Matthias Kibbert looks good, but Tim Robertson is working really hard to see if he can get ahead of Eric langedahl Breivik, who won his heat. But it is Matthias Kibbert to go through. Then Tim Robertson, probably the two favourites for this heat. The uh, Norwegian Breivik gave it a really, really good shot to try and uh, catch up, was, was hanging back and made, had a very good finish. So ending up in third uh, ahead of Thomas Krivda, but uh, Matthias Kibbert taking the win there. Tim Robertson also threw. Good work for the Swiss, who's trying to win his second World, uh, World Cup knockout sprint in a row. Yeah, and you could really see that, in my opinion, the two most active runners made it to the final. We have seen Tim Robertson taking this his own route choice to control six uh, going all alone there was two three four seconds faster and Matthias Kibbutz in the end was really setting the speed and uh, looked very good for both of them they met each other already in the quarterfinals so now they mm -hmm. they will have competed in all of the <laughs> 
this quarter semi and uh, final against each other. We see that Krivta was the only one having the C option at the runner's choice, and we also uh, can see here that it doesn't really matter if you take A or C at least. We haven't seen the B option here, and that's the w the part where yeah, Robertson. That was good for Tim Robertson there. Yeah. Really good. Really so now strong. we also see the men's map here. Kibbutz went out the other way, but then they joined back up again here and, and went the same way around uh, for number nine. And again, this Gautasteva choosing that different route choice didn't pay off. It didn't really lose too much time either. He was already kind of towards the back. Uh, then Breivik, maybe this was good for Breivik then. Yeah, really good choice for Breivik <laughs> running just not turning around the there and, and taking that choice. In the to end, catch I mean, he, he doesn't have to stop at the control and change direction mm -hmm. again. He can just continue in the same direction, and that, yeah, I mean, may, might make a difference of a second. Ooh, right, so looking at the results there, those are the top two to go through then to the final. Matthias Kubertz, Tim Robertson, Switzerland, and New Zealand, they have made it through to that final that will be happening very, very shortly. So they've got to go off now. They've got to try and recover as quickly as they can from that race, get the heart rate down, and kind of keep mo moving. Some of these, some of these athletes will run like 40k today. You know, with all the uh, warming up and cooling down. Okay, but one is over, and we move on to the next one already. And uh, look at that sea of uh, blue and yellow there. There are a lot of Swedes in this one. Four Swedes. We have Emil Svensk, Martin Regborn, Jonathan uh, Gustafsson, Ralph Street, Jörg Lussell, and Adrian Delen. So uh, they have already made their choice. They don't know what the others have chosen. They've got these barriers between them. They really can't see each other at all. But they made that choice a couple of minutes ago. When they get to the runner's choice section, we will find out which ones they've picked. The first semi-final, if you remember, that was uh, all uh, A and one C. So we will see what happens in this one. Our kind of gut was telling us that B was, was less good. So it wasn't a surprise that not really many people had chosen that one. Yeah, but we will see what happens here. And who do you rate? Martin Regborn had a really good um, race on Thursday. He was in the top 10. Um, could, be, could be a tough one to call this one. Yeah, it's a really tough one. It's good to see Jerke Lissel back mm -hmm. also. Had a good qualification this morning. Jonathan Gustafsson is a really strong runner. Uh, Ralph Street, we all remember 2019 when mm -hmm. he Ended up top three in the knockout sprint in Switzerland uh, with a very good decision on the to, towards the last control. So I think this will be a quite a tight race and especially interesting with four Swedish runners because many of the national teams have been training a lot of sprint and knockout sprint and I'm sure they know all, everything about uh, each other's strength mm -hmm. and weaknesses. So Ooh. they might just try to play that out here as well. There's almost a bit of a pile up at the control there as they go. Nobody kind of really willing, I think, to take it on. Jekyll is, is near the front there, and they've gone this same route that we saw at the uh, first semi final go. But really, I, I guess, again, um, we still really haven't seen too many. Oh my gosh, it's the same as it's the same as the first one. Everybody choosing A, apart from Delen, who chooses C. So this is going to be super interesting then to see. Uh, uh, how they go uh, here is just going to, you know, is there an advantage choosing one that more people go to? You know, is there an well, advantage choosing A or you don't, do you want to be by yourself on C? I don't think it matters for them. It's may, It might be a good thing It's if you're not the only one on your option. On the other hand, I mean, if you go on your own one, you don't really know if no one else has the same. You still could have another route choice. You could have a runner behind you. You could... But I don't think it matters so much. They know, I mean, they have seen all the three options. They know that they're quite similar. So I don't think that matters too much for them. So this group of five all have the A option. And they are, of course, all going together. But at this point, you know, we saw, we saw it in the other races as well. Like, they were just... Uh, you know, everybody keeping very close, nobody really making a move yet. It's only really kind of towards the tactics that seem to be the kind of standard tactics for a knockout sprint, if that is even a thing yet, is you're you're much more likely to kind of take that risk later on in that race and, and try and do something different to get ahead, basically. But you do want to be try, try and be 
towards the front of the pack as to have to make a surge to try and get ahead of anybody else is going to be uh, quite uh, tricky, definitely. But these five still all together here on their way to control number four, which is just round behind this building. You've got to try and not be too stressed. You've got to be uh, in control here. And you've got to be looking good. So now we can see they're all uh, grouping back up. But Delenn was kind of off the back of the pack anyway when they left, when they left control number two. So maybe not too much of a surprise that he's in that position um, at this point then. Let's see here at control five to six on this longer route. We know that there is a fast option if you turn to the left right after the fence. Um, and here it's together. really, you were talking about the tactics here, it's really about the positioning. I mean, you don't have to go away. You don't, it's the, the chance of like breaking away and go on your own, it's, it's really little. They, yeah. they are so equal physically. It's all about you, you don't want to be in fifth or sixth position towards the end. You really want to be in contact. You want to see the leader. You want to be really close. You don't have to be the first one, but you really want to be in contact with them. Um, and I think it's all of, about this. Don't lose, don't let a gap open. That's, mm. that's the main mm. thing. Yeah, there's a lot more tactics like similar to track and field. You've got to be in contention. You've got to be kind of on the shoulder of somebody. You so don't want to be boxed in and all of those kind of things. But here's the group. Uh, Gustafsson still leading them. Emil Svensk, then Martin Regborn, then Jukka Lussell. Ralph Street and Adrian Delenn in that order. So the four Swedish runners are all together at this point and kind of now we're at the, I guess, the, the furthest point from the, the start and the finish. Maybe trying to have a look at the, the shape of the course. When do you start making some, taking some risks, trying to overtake? And Ralph Street has moved himself up now here in the pack and they just drop down the bank to this control. We have seen a few people go slightly different routes here. Some going straight on, some turning their way back and yeah, mo oh, most of them going the, the way back here. And they will drop down. And But still, there, you, there is a different route choice here. You could go out to the other main street, I think. But, but it feels that place. in this in this heat here, we have the runners much more together. They don't really take their own decisions. They try to do more the positioning compared to the heat we have uh, seen before. So either they are less active in map reading or they all of them they have really a lot of trust in their physical abilities towards <laughs> the end and think that I can make a difference there. Yeah, that can be dangerous if you, uh, you know, everybody wants to feel like they're in great physical shape when they're on the line. And I mean, you've got to go into a race feeling like that because otherwise, you know, otherwise, what are you doing here? You've got to have that confidence. Confidence means so much in orienteering to to know how to push it, to not have those hesitations and everything like that. And now you could really see, I think if Martin Riekman would have been on his own, he would have gone to the left there. He has his head looking to the left mm -hmm. and then he was just checking the others backs and okay, no one is going there. I will go to the right as well. Yep, they're really wanting to have that pack mentality. They're staying together at this point. You can see that's the route that they've all gone. They will go up the steps. Let's see, here they go. You've got, and this is where you've got to kind of have a good picture in your head of where the control is when you get into this kind of garden section and now they split up, okay. They split up four, oh no. Oh no, they don't split up, they've all gone together. Yeah, because you they thought maybe they could get out at this south southwest mm -hmm. corner, but you couldn't. You have to go back and that way. And now there was an option to kind of go back down the steps, although we think that's pretty slow. So they've all gone the same way again, and now they're really going to be jostling for position. So here we are at the third last control, waiting for the runners. Should come very soon here. And from here we have seen that it was quite a good option to go up again. All the way here around. So let's Ooh. see here half the pack is going up. This will be very tough for Delen. Get in contact again. Lucelle staying too long on the other side of the road. So let's see, this is the last control. Who's going to be here first? It's going to be a real, real sprint out here. There we go. We can see some of the runners there. It's Ralph Street it here. It is Ralph Street. He's had a great finish. Ralph Street's got a gap. And then who's going to be next? Sven's. It is Emil Svensk, Martin Regborn, Jörg Lussell, Gustafsson is at the end. And now Svensk's tripping 
up on the stairs. So Ralph Street is in the lead. Look, he looks good to make it through to the final. And it will be Ralph Street and one of the Swedish team. So Ralph Street's managed to get a gap and there is a real shootout here. Martin Regborn has managed to make it. He is the top Swede. Oh, it's nearly a blanket finish there. So Ralph Street taking, uh, crossing the line first and Martin Regborn in second place. And what I really like about Ralph Street, I mean, we have seen it now today again. We've seen it uh, three years ago at this, one of the last knockout sprints we had. He's really much there when he's ne when like when you need a fast decision at the very end. He's there and he's always picking right then. And uh, I like it. It shows that he is very actively involved in his decisions and that he has a plan for the very end. Yeah, and you can see at the start he kind of hung back a little bit. He knows that you don't need to get stressed out at the start. You just kind of just need to be there. And then where you really want to be switched on is right at the end. And here we see again, uh, all of them having the same runner's choice except for Adrien Delen onto the C option. And the, in this heat here, actually, he was a bit slower uh, compared to the others. Hard to say if it was the runner's choice or if he had a maybe not the best route choice there. No one here has taken the one that we have seen uh, Robertson taking. And this is kind of the thing I was talking about. It's, no it's one not, really... It's yeah, not they, late enough in the race to make a risk. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But you it's could make early. a difference as well. Yeah, you could pull up, you know, yeah, you could uh, go from being at the back of the pack to being at the front but of the pack. Or I think actually that scouts. all of them, they had quite good confidence in their finish. So they thought, that, well, yeah, exactly. Why should I take try to force uh, yeah, force it to, to a decision already here. I can wait a bit and then here we have seen this small mistake when they were just running around this green area there instead of turning to the left straight ahead and here good, a good option to run up there because then you don't have to change direction at control 12. You can just keep on going. Yeah, then you, you're changing direction at control 11 and control 12. Um, so yeah, it's uh, just being able to run through all those controls is uh, really means a lot of seconds. So we've got confirmation then, Ralph Street and Martin Regborn, they join Matthias Kibbert and Tim Robertson into the final. So four of those six final places have been decided. And now we go for the uh, the last two spots in our third of our three semi-finals. And uh, this one is, again, it's gonna be a really close one, I think. Maybe uh, the first three on that, on that list are maybe the, the three favorites, but of course only two can go through. We will run through the lineup. August Molain has, uh, has not had a lot of experience on the World Cup, but has re performed really, really impressively uh, already here at this World Cup in Boros. Uh, we will look through the list. Exeli Rohala as well. There's two Finns in this, uh, in this semi-final. Nico Kirmala looked very impressive. Gustav Bergman, who was only just outside the medals on Thursday in the sprint, and our winner from the individual sprint on Thursday, Kasper Fosser. He looked fantastic in the quarterfinals. He didn't come into this competition with a whole load of confidence, but he uh, knows it was a really good performance. He had that speed in the individual sprint. There are still some question marks around him in terms of injury. He had a stress fracture this year, another stress fracture, and uh, I think has been running through some pain already. You know, he's not really been uh, doing the, his ideal training. But there they go, those six all the way out from the start, really carefully looking at those. Their maps, Mika Kimmler, one of the ones at the front. You can see Eskil Chinabe just hanging back at this point. And remember, it is only two to go through to that final. An easy first control. Oh. And now for the first time, you see the other route choice. And now you can see really see that dynamic in the pack. The leader is taking the other route choice. Yeah, we are just following. Yeah, who got there first was Gustav Bergman was near the front. Yeah. Luka Kimmler yeah. near the front. But I mean, it's totally understandable because they know. I mean, they know where the runner's choice is starting, yeah. Yeah. and to take a risk or a known route choice before the runner's choice is really kind of. It's maybe too big of a risk here. Maybe indeed. So they all go through here together. 
no risk taking early on as we would maybe expect and then they have this control number two and then the runner's choice happens we will see what they have done Ah, now it is an even split then, an even split between C and A. Fossa, Ruhala and Kimala both choosing C, Bergman, Shinneberry and Mullane all choosing A. So equal split of those three. Nobody has chosen B at oh. all. Uh, and I think it's because you have to back in at, at the second, at the first one of the runner's choice. You have to go back again. You have to run this fence and then go back in again. And I think this is something you don't really want to do in your uh, on your option. And the second control of the of the ones you choose, it's like just further away as well. I think it's it's obviously a bit further, but uh, we'll see. But of course, they have no idea what the others have chosen. They have no idea if they're going on the, the, that same route or the different route. So some of them will have had the control and some of them won't have had that yeah, control. Yeah, but of course, after the first control, they know on which options yeah, the yeah. others are. So they will get a feeling pretty pretty early on uh, if there is some, uh, another runner on their option as well. But it's interesting. They've chosen kind of different route choices here compared to what we've seen uh, in the other semi-finals, actually. We saw uh, them definitely choosing different routes uh, on the C option, certainly. Mm -hmm. So it will be very interesting to see at Control 5 if they're still together or if we, if we have a small gap. We have seen that uh, with Dulen. It was slightly slower there. This is two Swedes Gustav in the front. Bergman and August Millian. And Casper Foster there in third place. Then everybody else very close together. So... Interesting. Mm. And now we have this small, small gap, uh, which opens up a little bit for another route yeah, choice yeah. here. So maybe we'll see someone taking this kind of a risk the here. The they will. Uh, nope, they will all go think, together. And yet, yeah, those those six were just very much more spread out. You know, it's hard to tell. Maybe the pace is higher than it was um, on that, the one we just had, the second semi-final. It's really hard, uh, it's really hard to tell, but often when the pace is higher, they, they, you know, they spread out just that little bit further. Um, and maybe that's what they're trying to do. That maybe that's Gustav Bergman's tactics. He wants to really try and uh, run the legs off Kasper Fosser and really uh, pick the pace up really high from the start. August Molen is hanging on there as well. Kasper Fosser in third. And they are still all more or less together, it's only Eskil Schindeberg who was a little bit of a gap there. He has to be careful now to not let it open too much. Okay, they head down then, down the, the small hill towards control number eight. And we've seen diff a few different route choices and different micro route choices at this point. Now you're starting to, you, you kind of know it's just a few controls kind of in a straight line coming up. They all go straight on here. Uh, and then round the building, they know that there are only going to be a few controls left. They've got to try and get in the right position to, to make a move there. And you can see how brutal it is for Shinneberry. It's really, I mean, he has been fighting with this small gap now for for quite a while, but it's so hard to close it again. It's only a few meters, but it's so hard to get back uh, in contact. And it takes so much energy out of you that then when, by the time you get to this, this run in, you have nothing left, you know? So that's what's really, uh, you know, every meter counts. Every meter counts because you need to be well recovered from the, from the previous races. You want to have maybe have had an easy quarterfinal. Um, I don't think there's such a thing as an easy qualification. If we look at the, the men's race, though, you had to be in two of the heats within 20 seconds, 21, 22 seconds of actually making it through to be in that top 12 who'd go through. The other one, 32 seconds. You can't have an easy run on that, uh, on that uh, qualification because... There are so many runners who can make it through. Let's have a look at control 10. We can just see in the left-hand corner, they've gone together. Still no splitting up here. They're all together going at the same on the same route here. I think the, uh, we will see the decision from control 11 to 12. Okay, yeah, they're all going together. It's the two Swedes leading the way. 
And it's still all really close. It's all to play for here. But Gustav Bergman has been leading the way for, uh, I think, ever since the runner's choice, basically. He has been uh, taking the initiative and going uh, the same way. And no surprise that we see more and more spectators at this spot here, because mm -hmm. it's really the one the one spot you can see the decisions. It's a very good decision to go up there to the street and not go down. That's what we can say after those two first semi-finals. Okay, Kasper Fosser has hit the front. Gustav Bergman, he takes a risk to go the other way. I don't think it's going to be very good. Maybe that puts August Molain in a good position to make it through to the final. So Kasper Fosser, just from control, 10 to 11, he has hit the front. And now we wait to see who are the first ones through. We've got this wide camera angle. We're going to see who's going to make it round the corner first. I think I can see the Norwegian. Mullane has managed to just nip ahead. There are the two there. Where's Gustav Bergman? Has he made? Uh, yes, I think that was too much of a risk. You can see how much time it has lost him. And there is a fight out here. Mika Kimmela is there as well. But August Mullane and Kasper Foster, they are the two ones here. Is Kasper Foster going to be beaten here? My goodness me. I think he is. Kasper Foster misses out. August Mullane takes the first place. Mika Kimmela into second place. And for me, that was Foster run out. Oh, my goodness me. Very strong finish here of August Millian. Uh, he did the right decision there, following Kasper Foster up the hill. And you could see that Gustav Bergman, he felt a bit... Uh, yeah, he had to do something. Yeah, he didn't and feel like he backed himself. He wanted to take the risk of going yeah, the other way. Unfortunately and, no. for him, the runners in front of him, they picked the right yeah. choice there. Otherwise, yeah. he would have had the chance to get back into that race again. I but think so. But what, what was that, like, here? 10 meters back? You know, that's the amount of time that he lost from, or distance that he lost from going there. But my gosh, that's the closest finish we've seen today. Absolutely incredible. Uh, the, the sprinting speed from those three men uh, on the line and unlucky for Kasper Fossa who I think on paper you would say would would win that heat but you know he, we know he hasn't ha he's had a far from ideal um, winter and maybe just just that one percent that half a percent is where it was missing there but in incredible stuff from Mika Kiermala and uh, from August Lane to take those two last spots in the final yeah and I mean it's it's brutal with knockout sprint because Kasper Fosse, he did nothing wrong. No. Wrong here in th this course, he had he was in the lead in the very end. He had the right route choice there and the, to the second last control. But it's so small margins between the runners. And if you have a good day, you win this sprint finish. Now today, the others were stronger. Maybe it's also because in other uh, sprint relays before you could pick your heats. Mm -hmm. Now today yes. you were kind Knockout of sprints. Yes, you could. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Here today it was just about the world ranking. Yeah. So it's kind of a different situation as well. You had no possibilities to kind of choose your enemies or your <laughs> competitors. So that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Before they've had yeah this opportunity to they everybody crowds round and they all pick which heat they want to go in. But it's based on your result in the qualification. You were automatically assigned a heat, which I don't know. I think it's more probably more straightforward for the organizers and for everybody involved. But you see all of those who picked this the um, the to go right from 11 to 12. You could just see that the amount of distance that they lost compared to the others was um, was really decisive, so uh, yeah. Okay, so August Molain, Mika Kimmela are the two that go through then from the final semi final. They are they complete the six that have made it into that uh, men's final. So we have uh, Matthias Kibert, Tim Robertson, Martin Regborn, Ralph Street, Mika Kimmela, and August Molain. Those are the six who will compete for three medals in the final once we have finished all of the uh, women's as well. Three kind of quite differently, uh, quite different semi-finals in terms of some of the tactics, in terms of how close the runners were, where the risks were, but 
ultimately it's about being there and being doing the great orienteering at the end of the course. Okay, we're going to move then on to the women's semi-finals. Three of those to come again at the top three to make it through. Yunus, why don't you take us through the course again? I mean, it's the it's more or less the same beginning, or it is the same beginning. You have this short one to the first control, then the route choice to the second control. We've seen in all almost all the heats here, there were no differences in the route choice between one and two. If the pack goes to the right, you go to the right. If the pack goes to the left, you follow there. Uh, runner's choice, we only have seen A and C. Then five to six, slightly different here. That's the one we have seen in the GPS or in the preview before. Uh, opens up a little bit more to go to the left there on the Robertson route. Uh, there's also opens up to go back out again and uh, run around the building there. Uh, after that, after Control 7, from Control 8, you have the same course again, so we have these different route choice possibilities between 9, 10, and then in the very very end towards the second last control again, where you see that going up the street again is a very good option. Yes, but they will not know any of this. They have been hiding over in quarantine after their quarterfinals. Uh, recovering, warming up, getting ready for these three semi-finals. And to be honest, in terms of the qualification and then the pro progression from the knockout, from the quarterfinals into the, the uh, semi-finals, there haven't been too many or really any shocks in terms of in terms of who has got through or more importantly who has not got through. Um, but we know there are a lot of Swedish women uh, on this start line, and uh, with the World Cup, uh, the World Championships coming up, they are racing to do well here. They are also racing for uh, national selection. Nina Strand had a really fantastic uh, individual sprint; it's her best ever uh, sprint result. Uh, with the silver then and uh, Sarah Hagstrom ha was having such a good race in that sprint right up until the end and she looked really really strong in her um in her quarterfinals, she's, she knows she had, she's got good form, so she'll be really, really wanting to do something here. So we've got uh, again four Swedes here, Norwegian and a Dane, and only two to make it through to the final. They've already picked their runners' choice, and now they can head out here into the terrain, taking a look. Uh, Marlon Egeri Christensen looking at her map, taking the one of the leading packs there. Lena Strand, uh, Sarah Hagstrom, both up there and uh, ready to go. So we see what the choice is here. Who gets the first? Uh, mm -hmm. You could see that um, yeah. the Norwegian uh, Victoria Hester Bjornstad was had looked to the left. She was maybe going to go that way, but she kind of wanted to see what everybody else was doing. And I now mean, they all go the same. Sure, way. she's seen both options here in an individual sprint she would have gone to the left but i think it's quite a good choice if you see all the others go to the right just follow it's not here you have to decide uh, this semi-final here uh, keep in the pack wait until after the runner's choice and then try to yeah try to do something there okay here we see them. Okay, everybody chooses A, apart from Sarah Hugstrom, who chooses B. So she is the first one we've seen in this whole competition so far to choose the B option. Again, A, very, very popular. We think it's a lot more uh, kind of straightforward in the orienteering, especially maybe the entrance into control, uh, into the second of those two controls, and then, again, then out again into control number five. But they do actually split up here on their way to the second control. Very hard to say. He's in the lead here. Hagström has to go and back into the control three there. Yeah, they split up a lot more here. Is Lena Strand? And this, there we go. That's the third control. No hesitation at this point. And, and we really know that all the others had the same control as Strand, so seems to have a small gap there already. We also see now that Hagström is getting close to control B. It will be interesting. We haven't seen that before, so it will be interesting to see if it's slower or if it's faster or, or if it's equal.
But do you think uh, Lena Strand has made a gap? She she went a slightly different way to number two, or was it that or just her running speed that's allowed her to take the gap? It's really hard to tell at this point. But she's looking really strong. Yeah, but of course this is exactly the situation she likes to be in. I mean, she has now she has control over the race. See that it was a good option mm. for Sara Ekström as well. So I think now they will be here together, yes. And they have already a gap there. And this is a very convenient situation. You can feel that you quit that you can try to work with this gap and try to push hard in, in front, but you still have time to take your own decision. You can avoid these stressy situations in the pack. So this is the Tim Robertson route. And that's right, they don't have the same control as the men. Yeah, you see, they have this shorter one, but this is kind of the Tim Robertson route that looks pretty good. So now this option to the right, I mean, we have seen it has been faster to go to the men's control there, mm -hmm. to the left. So now this one to the right is totally out of discussion yeah. here. There's no way that this would be faster. There would be an option to go out, kind to of back out. Back from, out of control yeah. five, yeah. And then run around. But I think this is a good option here, and especially if everyone is taking it, then... Again, why risk it here? But at the same time, you already have a gap here. Whoa, it's just growing, this gap. Yeah. These two are looking so strong here. And uh, Sarah, it's hard to know about what, whether that B forking has had a, had a different mm. kind of opportunity to, to change things up. But I'd say possibly and not really. <laughs> it will be interesting to see. I mean, everyone, we know about uh, Caroline Olson's strength to really get into this finish and... Uh, her physical ability when she really wants and has to. And it will be interesting to see when she will be kicking it in because she is already there now. Yep. She will really push to close this gap. You can see the first two were kind of making a, a fraction of hesitations. I mean, we're yeah. being really, really picky here, but they were making a fraction of a hesitation. And uh, is that Lena Strand just yeah. kind of going left and right, just running a few extra meters? And the thing is, of course, she knows there's no there's no forking now because they had this runner's choice that's all of the forking they know that, that it will be here so now it's she no she can stop reading the map and mm -hmm. she can focus on closing the gap yeah. of course it's maybe not the thing you like most about yeah. when we are talking about <laughs> orienteering but in this situation i mean that's the only chance she has she has to close that gap what whatever is coming Exactly, and she's managing it. She is managing to close the gap, but it's still Sarah Hugstrom out in front, then Lena Strand, and then Carolyn Olsen. And these three, I mean, they've been in the national team together for a good number of years. I think they're all pretty close in age together. They'll have been competing against each other in Sweden for years and years and years. They, will, they know each other so well, particularly those three, mm -hmm. and now to be racing against each other. Oh, and they go through the, the passage, which is fine. A little bit unexpected, but I don't think they will have necessarily lost. I don't know, they have to make a few sharper corners, but uh, I think ultimately those three are, have now got that gap over the rest of the field. So here is control number 10. So let's see if there's still a few meters gap. No, I don't think so. Now they're all together, all three of them. This is what I was saying earlier. You've got to be really distinct when you get into these courtyards to know exactly where the control is. Oh, and... Oh, Lisa Risby. Oh, I think... Panicking there. I don't think it's good to go out the back, but that's it. You're making those, losing those seconds to make that decision. You are. It's a crucial one there. But then there's still a route choice here. You could go the different ways around the building. Oh, and they are splitting up then. Okay. Ah, so Olsen choosing the different way, Hagstrom and Strand. Uh, uh, this is probably similar, but then it's which way you choose when you go. Olsen maybe is setting up a good route the other way if she runs Let's straight to the next one. Oh, yes, I think oh, it's advantage, Carolyn Olsen there. I think so that was really it, good. It looks good for Strand and Olsen here. Very smart decision by Carolyn Olsen. 
Yeah, she set up the opportunity at this control to run straight through the control and then take the shorter route uh, from 11 to 12. So I think that was really, really smart of her. This is the last control then. Let's see who is here first. You can see there that looks like Carolyn Olsen and Lena Strand. Where are the others? Lena Strand is in first, Carolyn Olsen in second. They're looking back behind and they've got a big gap. That was really decisive at the end of the semi-final. Lena Strand looks behind. She doesn't need to push too hard. It's just her and Carolyn Olsen. So Lena Strand and Carolyn Olsen then up through the running. They don't have to fight too hard. They know it's just the two of them to make it through. And that's a big gap over the rest of the field. Lena Strand and Carolyn Olsen then are the first two through to the women's final and really quality orienteering at the end of that course. Mm, and uh, we can definitely say it's very important that you picked the right route there to the second last control. Um, it was interesting to see uh, Olsen, she had a big gap there in the middle of the race. She was quite many seconds behind and you could really see how she was fighting back into the competition, into this semi-final and of course now into the final. And uh, I thought it was quite uh, courageous to, to choose your own to the, we've seen that, to the third last control when she, yeah, control. when she yeah, went the other yeah, one. Yeah. Because my feeling is that she would know that she would beat all, all the others in a sprint finish mm, and yeah. doesn't really need to risk yeah. it. But at the same time, I mean, I like oh. this. It's very active orienteering. It was a good choice and it paid off. Yeah, I think you've uh, absolutely put it really well. And I think here you could see why she was a few seconds behind. She was hesitating there just before control three. And the good, we also know now that option B is very fast as well. Mm -hmm. So Strom mm -hmm. made uh, kind of a gap there. Well, this is the thing about the knockout. Like, I think when it was first introduced, you think, oh, there's always a worse option. And you really need to, it, it's really crucial to pick the right option. But I don't think that's really its function. Like its function is to make sure everybody does orienteering and making sure everybody is actively reading the map and not just following. I think it forces everybody to do orienteering. And here we have seen them going out through this passage. We haven't seen anyone before running. And here, that's what I'm talking about very soon. I didn't expect them to split up here, but it paid off. And especially here, she could continue in the same direction. And it's good if you don't have to stop and turn and speed up again. And then at the ne next control, control 12, if you come from the right route choice, you have to kind of make a 90 degrees turn again and it slows you down so much, yeah. it costs a lot of energy. That's ultimately where Sarah Hugstrom lost out in that in that race, I think. Okay, right, we are straight on to the second uh, semi-final for the women. And for me, this is really, really tight. This is gonna be a really, really uh, exciting race, I think, here. Martina Ruch, Marie Katani, Andrina Benjaminson, Tova Alexanderson, Emma Biesma, Eleanor Ross, really quality quality field here uh, for this um semi-final i mean they're, they're all world class athletes but this one is really exciting for me yeah it's, it's not the one uh, the one semi-final you would pick on your own to be in <laughs> really no it really really isn't but interesting to see that uh tova alexanderson didn't win her qualification she didn't win her uh, I don't think she won the quarterfinal either, so it's going to be really interesting as they all just take a good amount of time to look at their maps. Okay, let's see which direction they go. And we expect them all to stay together to this control. Who but, reaches the first? But here is. Tova Alexanderson, she is the one who's made the choice. Oh, and they do split up. And the Biesmo is the only one to have gone the other way, but, yeah, but I think the, she's the losing thing is seconds in just She making should that not choice. have hesitated. No. That's the problem. I, I just was about to say, if there is a heat where they could split, split up, it's here because they all are very good individual sprinters. So you could really pick your own and trust your orienteering and your uh, skills in sprint orienteering, but you shouldn't hesitate that much. If, you, if you're uh, like unsure, if you go to this on this route choice then just follow the others 
Okay, Alexanderson has got the uh, different runner's choice to everybody else. Everybody else is doing A. She is doing C, but she's already got a gap. You could just that confidence at that first control is characteristic characteristic of Tova Alexanderson. She didn't stop. She isn't going to wait for anybody else. She hasn't got time for anybody else. She doesn't need to care about what anybody else does. And she has got that tactic to just go straight out of the start. But Emma Biesmo hasn't lost any time on this pack by going the other route choice. And I think her route would have been faster, but she hesitated yeah, yeah. for just a bit too yeah. long. You could count a couple of seconds there. All the others had moved away from that control and she was still there going, should I, should I go, should I not go? Mm, interesting. So remember, Alexanderson has C here. Everybody else has A. So we would expect them to split up here. But it looks like Eleanor Ross is leading out this group. Andrina Benjaminson there in second place, and Mabiesmo just overtaking Marie Cataini on this mm. corner. You can see how important it is for her to work her way up in this pack here to a better position. And of course, this is a situation to Alexander really likes to be on her own, in the lead, on her own option, no one around. She is very confident in doing her own race here I think this looks it's ideal situation yeah absolutely ideal. you don't have this nervous situation of other runners around you I mean there's always something that can happen you can run towards the control have to back out and then you run into the others coming around the corner and she has got a lot of time now to do her own race to her own orienteering feel comfortable has, has even some time to double check the route choice here yeah, you put the, she has those extra safety seconds, you know, the, the, the opportunity to play it safe there. Uh, everybody else really close, and obviously at that point they'll, be, they'll have seen how far Alexanderson is ahead. What do you think if you're at this point in this chasing pack? Do you just go, right, well, one of us goes through? Yeah, I think it's very hard. The gap is quite big, of course. You shouldn't give up here, always something can happen, but it makes it more difficult because now you have to win kind of the, the race of those five other mm -hmm. competitors. It adds the stress levels go up again. Yeah, of course, and as we've seen before, everything can happen. I mean, you can just run into someone else or you can just struggle with the last route choice and the race is over, so it's... It's, of course, it would be better for them to close the gap again to Alexanderson, but the gap is so big it will need a small mistake of her. Have you seen this So we have still oh. Elena Ruos, and now they're splitting up here. Andrina Benjaminsen choosing a slightly different route here. Here we see them. They, it's actually good, a good choice by Benjaminsen because they have to go there as well. Uh, might give her a few meters back. Yes, she, yeah. here she is together with Elena Ruos. Yeah, right on her shoulder. And that feeling of hearing somebody else's breath around you, hearing someone else's footsteps, like it's so unusual. You can, you I can think, play really. some mental games. You really can. <laughs> oh. oh, nearly going down the wrong uh, path there, easy to do. And you can still see it's a big gap here to Alexanderson. She has even the possibility to choose the wrong route there at the end. <laughs> so how often have we said that for Tova <laughs> Alexanderson? Oh, she's chosen the wrong route, but she's still uh, managed to and take it. Here we away. see they're splitting up. Emma Biesmo going more, taking the left route choice there. Is she? Yeah. 
think so. Here's Tova Alexanderson then, control 10. The interesting will be the group behind. There is Benny Aminsen, there is Elena Roos, and here is Piesmo. Oh, and the mistake. Oh, where is the control? It's just hidden behind there. You've got to be so distinct. And Benny Minson may be losing a couple of strides. You could also see that it paid off for Emma Biesmo to yeah, take yeah, this yeah, other yeah, route yeah. here. Good work there. But now it's really this part that the most important part, maybe. And this is the way, I think, Alexanderson, that's the way you want to go, really, if you're going to set up a good route to 11 and a good route to 12 as well. Let's see Let's what see happens with the others. Here. Benjaminsen oh taking the Alexanderson route. It's control 11 then. And, and she course. actually goes the slower route then, I think, Alexanderson. But it won't matter. It won't matter at all. It's really let's see here. The this other, is the, the other taking, of course, oh, she no. sees that. And now it looks good, good for, for Elena Rose here. Of course, they saw Alexanderson going to this on this route there when she exited this. So it looks really good for Elena Rose here now. OK, so we're expecting to see Alexanderson through the first one to this last control. Here she is. She's had a gap all the way from the uh, being so decisive at the first control. Here is Eleanor Roos. Oh, this is Benjamin. Benjamin, it's looking good for the Norwegian here. Oh, this gap oh, is. Oh, oh, this is big. close, to be honest. Can she work hard? She just takes a little look over her shoulder. And for me, she's looking confident, but Eleanor Ross is such a machine. She is so fast, she makes it look so easy. Does Tova Alexanderson, she has come to be qualified. And in second place here, it's too much to do for Eleanor Ross. Ale Andrina Benjaminson making it through then. And it was actually the first time you've seen that someone... Went that way and, yeah. Uh, yeah. and didn't win on it. Yes, but Eleanor Ross was still a, a few seconds behind Benny Minson anyway at that control. That was really impressive. But five seconds clear then for Alexanderson. And as we uh, recover from this race, uh, we've been handed a bit of paper about the third men's semi-final. And what we have is the news that four men in that semi-final have been disqualified. We're not sure why at this point, but it looks like Kasper Fossa and Eskil Shinneberry were the only two not to be disqualified from that third semi-final. So they have been promoted then into the final. So bad luck for Mika Kimmler and August Molain, who we thought were going to go through, but they we have been handed a bit of paper that says they have been disqualified. So all change uh, for the men's final. Here we see Alexanderson, she opened the gap really early in this race here, already towards the second control. The group behind chasing here. And you can also see that Martina Ruch quite early had to open a gap and kind of never was in the fight for this final position here. Here we had the different route by Emma Biesmuth paid off and a small mistake here, some hesitation. And then different routes here towards control 11 again. Then Elena Roos, as we said before, it was kind of the first time we've seen someone going uh, to the left there and not really winning on it. A surprise. Surprising anyway. Through our Tova Alexanderson and uh, Andrina Benjaminson. They join Lena Strand and Carolyn Olsen in this uh, final. So now we go through to the third semi final. We can have a look at the lineup here. For me, the big favourite for this semi final is Hannah Lundberg. She won the qualification by 22 seconds. That was absolutely incredible. And we know her speed is very good from the individual sprint as well. We know it's looking really, really good uh, for her. She's going to be full of confidence. And then for me, that the second one to go through, that's going to be really tight for me, to be honest. I think between 
Simona Abasold, Susie Anashikova, Megan Carter Davis. I think that's maybe where it's going to come from. Uh, interesting, Megan Carter Davis won the quarterfinal. Those three were all in the same quarterfinal, and Megan Carter Davis won it. So uh, Hannah Lundberg taking the lead there at this point. They're all going to now, what we don't want to see is any hesitations at this uh, first control. Mm, let's see here. Hannah Lundberg taking the lead here early. It would be interesting to see if all of them go here. Yes, yep. indeed. Simone Abersold, interesting at that point, just kind of sitting back and, oh, a bit of a hesitation. Has she got the right gap? That's something I really don't understand. I mean, she knows where the runner's choice will start. She could just follow the others if she's not sure about the route choice. So this is where Abersold there. goes round. I think she will be and I losing think it's, at that. It's yes. further as well yeah, yeah. from the... That's from a mistake. The, yeah. It will be tough for her to get back into this group again. But here we are with Hannah Lundberg. And you can see she's really pushing hard here. She's taking control from the beginning. She doesn't want to be involved in any problems with other runners. But here we have actually two runners with the B option. And you see the gap then, Abersold at the back, everybody going through this route the same way. Lundberg, Solikova and Carter Davis all with A, Drakorn and Janosikova in with uh, B. But Abersold has a lot to do now to try and catch up. Again, splitting up. Mm, you can see it's seven, eight seconds here already. And it's so tough because you always get the feedback that you're <laughs> quite far behind. And of course, she knows how many seconds she was hesitating. She might have noticed even that her route w didn't really pay off. You see also that Janosikov and Dukon, they were actually choosing differently on the B option. So now here we have Hanna Lundberg in the lead and it's a big lead already. It's a really big lead for Hannah Lundberg, and now there's also a gap now. Megan Carter-Davis has got a gap over the rest of the field. There is Salikova as well in the background, but big gaps at the, the top of the field here um, after this runner's choice. Mm, you can see big gaps almost between all of the runners. Yanishikova a little bit further down and now uh, Abersold goes a different way mm -hmm. um, and for her she knows she's you know maybe she's got that feedback she's she's got to do something different to to make any difference if you know you know she is 16 seconds behind Megan Carter Davis yeah I mean she she knows that no one came from this direction so the only thing she can do now is that yeah go all in and yeah. try something but I mean the, the gap is so big it will be very tough for her. Yeah, it will be really hard for her. We see Lundberg through, we see Carter Davis through as well, and then down onto this uh, seventh control here. And this, we can see the difference of Abersold. But for me, she's going to lose even more time here. If you know she was just ahead of uh, uh, Dickhorn uh, at that point, a and bit, I think... A bit unnecessary yeah. to go um, in there as well. She could have continued and then cut a little bit over the over the field there. And this semi-final, very different again to the ones we've seen before with much bigger gaps opening up. Uh, and maybe again, you take some safety seconds to just choose that. Or because you haven't had anybody in front of you, maybe that you can see which way they're going. It's Yeah, I mean, you, you can know. see it here. Yeah, There's exactly. no one you see. She's kind of doing the individual sprint here. I wonder if she even knows and with which position she is. 
No, it's hard to tell. She is in third, as you can see there. But really, those little hesitations can only mean good things for Carter Davies and for uh, Lundberg. And the gap is uh, bigger here. But no, maybe looking better for Yanashikova. There you can go. You can see she has caught up her teammate. Maybe good feedback for her, less good feedback for Stelikova. And again, they split up. They go the different way around this long building to go to the boulder on the other side of it. Don't think there's much really in that route choice. Yeah, you can see the gap is really big for it's very good. Looks very good for Anna Lundberg and Carter Davis. And of course, they know about their situation. They can. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say relax, but they can kind of slow down a little bit. They don't have to go all in, of course. They don't have to go for a final sprint uh, from the second last to last and control and to finish. And that's a very good situation. Uh, yeah. Oh, regarding is the she going to see where it is? There it is. Just not quite distinct as to where that exactly that control was, but it shouldn't matter for her that she's got a big gap over the rest of the field and out in the same direction. Those, those are the top two. It's only the top two to make it through to the final. Here are the two checks. They are together. Jana Shikova has managed to catch up a little bit of time on Stelikova, but still not very distinct into the control. Jana Shikova has just got it better, but maybe she's now going to head. You can't go out that way. You have to turn around here. And everybody having some difficulties at that point. Here's the leader, though, Hannah Lundberg, all the way through at control number 11. She's going to take the good route choice then to go to 12. We wait now for Megan Carter Davis. It's also looking good for her to make it through to this final. She's going to go the other way. We think it's a bit slower, but it shouldn't matter. The gap on this one is big, really, really big. You can see uh, the difference between all of those runners. It would be interesting now to see if a third runner was, you know, in a hypothetical situation that three runners make it through. That fight for the third place will be really tricky. But actually now, what does this mean for these runners here to have uh, not have to push and fight for their place on the, the finish line here of this of this semi-final, maybe it's going to give them a little bit more extra in the legs for the yeah, final. Yeah, of course, look at the speed of Hannah Lundberg here. She can, be, she can be really choking here. She knows that she is through. She can take it, yeah, in a very easy speed. And look I mean, that. she has been more or less the whole race here. She has been uh, in a very convenient situation. She didn't have to push too hard. She knew about the gap. She knew that there's no one around her and uh, at the same time, I mean, she is in the last semi-final. She has a bit less time to recover, but now, I mean, it, it's not a bit as big as it, of a disadvantage here because she didn't have to push too hard. No, she did not at all. So here are the last few runners. Such a big gap between the top two and then these next few coming through here. This looks like uh, Jana Shikova, I think, here into the finish. Simona Abasol has managed to catch up a little bit of time. And then uh, Salikova and Drake Horn at the, uh, the end. Goodness me, Simona Abasol, I mean, really lost all of that right at the start from taking that, that different route choice and the, the hesitations through there. Um, you know, you've really just got to go go with the pack at the start. And, and she made the wrong route choice here. Yeah, you can but see it here first. Results. Here she stayed quite for a long time, then she chose a different option here. And you see that it's a very long way around, then she backed down here. She could have continued there and come from this direction into the control. Um, and you see already here, uh, Anna Lundberg, she has a big gap. And from here she is more or less safe. I mean, the, the, the gap is so big, she knows that she didn't make a mistake. Here you can see quite far as well. You see that there's no other runner around you, so that's uh, for her. This was quite an easy semi-final, and also this, it's kind of the same for Carter Davis. Of course, she has Stelikova behind her here, but the gap here is also about 10 seconds. Uh, you can take a look back. You see no one Stelikova there really. Here being very indistinct, I think, to this this one from eight to nine. Like we saw mm. how much she was yeah, hesitating. Exactly. She just dropped back in in the pack there. 
once, once you lose kind of sight of that runner in front, she was dropping back. But at the same time, I mean, it's it's also uh, it, it gives you also a good feeling if you have been in the situation. If you take, for example, Caroline Olson, who has re she had to fight for her position in the final, and she now won this fight. She knows she got confidence that if if I am in the fight for it, I can do it on the last control. I have a good final 50, 100 meters as well, and they didn't really had the chance to test this part. Of course, they're very happy that they didn't have to do it, but at the same time, if you were in the situation and you succeeded in it, it gives you a good feedback as well. Yeah, it really does. So the recovery starts, the uh, trying to get in a good place to be on the start line then for the two finals that we have about to come up. They're going to start in the next couple of minutes, the men's first and then the women's final here. And uh, some incredible orienteering. I think maybe when we had a look at the, the course at the beginning, we wouldn't really know like what's what the characteristics of the race would be, whether there would be much opportunities to take a risk towards the end. Um, but really, we have seen that that is uh, kind of been able to pay off. So we will um, get preparing for an amazing final. We hear from, uh, I think, someone who has managed to get through. So Emil Svenske, uh, you just ran the the semi-final here. Uh, how did you experience it? How did you experience your run? Yes, it was a really cool, cool course and cool competition. So yeah, it was really fun. And you didn't make it onto the final. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it, it's not a good feeling to miss the final, of course. Yeah, the feeling was uh, really good in the yeah, the whole course. <laughs> yeah. And what did you think became like the decisive moment out there? Uh, what do you mean, the size of more? Uh, what, 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 what did, uh, why did it end like it did? Why did Reikborn and um, and Krikmok go on and you didn't? I was first in the third last control and uh, took uh, other rules choice to the uh, second last and then I, I lost some meters from uh, on Ralph and uh, yeah, then I was <laughs> really tight in the uh, the last meter. So yeah, miss. Okay, and you were four sweets in the same heat. Did that have any influence on the run? You think? No, of course, all, <laughs> all want to compete. And now you have a sprint relay tomorrow. Are you able to focus on that now and have positive thoughts on that? Or are you just disappointed with today's race? Yeah, of course, I'm really disappointed with today. So yeah, we will see you in the afternoon. OK, interesting stuff then from Emil Svensk, who wasn't the one who was able to get through then to the final. We can have a look now at this final course. We've got the same start and the same finish as well. We've got a few different uh, route choice options here from control one and control number two as well. They go up on this uh, larger hill, control number five. You've got a route choice to make it down on the slope as well. Then uh, again, a few different route choices between um, seven and eight, which is also we've already had a look at. We, then we have a long run through here. We go through this arena one time, a lot of running, you know, jostling for position, all of that, and they go out another time for a short loop and maybe some opportunities to take a few route choices, maybe from 10 to 11. It's going to be really, really interesting. And so we've just had the uh, start list then for the men's final. And after getting a bit of paper saying some people have been disqualified, we've got a whole other list of people mm -hmm. uh, making through. Yannis, you just had a chat. What yeah, do we know? We had actually got Kasper Foster back in this final. We have seven runners in this final. Uh, we got to know there was a, it was a jury decision, so we don't really know why it happens. There was some part with a, with a fence or with a, with something that didn't really work, and the jury decision is at least that uh, now we have seven runners in the final. So we thought August Molen and Mika Kimmler had been disqualified. Um, 
they haven't been disqualified anymore because they are now on this list. Um, uh, but Casper Fosser, who was third, run out in that really, really tight uh, sprint finish, has been advanced into that final. So uh, as you can see here, we've got uh, seven men now into this uh, final. Seven men, only three can take the medals. And... Uh, a good whole mixture of nations represented then in this final. It will be interesting to see how it is. they solve it at the start here. <laughs> with seven runners. This is August Malian. But they, they don't have to choose a different map here. They don't, they, they, don't, uh, they don't have to be separated from each other. So this man, very excited to be advanced here, looking very, very happy. He, wasn't, he didn't think he had made it. And then I'm sure, you know, all of the emotions that he's been feeling in the last half an hour, not going through, then going through, what is happening? Goodness me, a lot of uh, tricky situations here. And this is how they solve it, two next to each other here. And this is a very, very exciting uh, final of this knockout sprint. I mean, too close to call, really, having seen those, um, having seen those semi-finals, I think it's going to be really tight. And you know, I mean, we were talking about the importance of positioning in the group with six runners. Now it's seven runners. It's even more important that you have a good position here. Um, usually in the finals we see quite active runners with individual decisions. I hope we will see that again. You mentioned it uh, when we went through the course. There are possibilities to go on your own route. Um, it's just in the final loop. Let's say it's kind of the same again. Three controls before the finish. We will have it. It will kind of change and it will be very physical. We have, will have a long run in. And now we are in following them around on the route they have been a few of them have been on on the fur and the semi-final again as well yeah, so it's interesting to see like some of them will have been here before some of them won't have been here before we've got these uh oh yes they missed the gap yeah it's very very easy to do because it's so soon after you come out of that control and then they, they were knew they were looking for it we've got all these building works here that make perfect barriers for mm. sprint orienteering for knockout and it's also very difficult with the cameraman here in this because uh, it's he, he's getting involved in the decision here uh, when they turn again after a mistake he is of course standing in their way now they split up here. This is not a very important decision. No. It's easy either to go left around the house or to the right. They will come together again. You see it here. Yeah. Towards the third control. I think, again, in three and four, you know, that's just a little transport leg around the back of this house here. But then we have a route choice. Mm, and you can also see the one who really had... Uh, yeah, it was a good situation for Kibbutz that they have the hesitation there because he was in second last spot. Uh, before they had to change direction there, the small the mistake to the second control. So for him and his position in the pack, it was really good that really good that this happened. And now they are going up a hill there, and uh, actually a pos possibility for some route choices here. It seems that they all follow keyboards to the right here, climbing up the hill towards control five. Yeah, you've got to take this little gap through the building and then up the hill. You can go a few different ways again going down the hill. Don't think it's going to matter too much, but here's the pack. Mm, you can see that the positions, positions they changed again. Kibbutz now reading the map inten very intensely. And they do split up. If you go more to the left, or oh, actually, no, they're not, not splitting up too much, to be honest. Some maybe will go towards the steps uh, behind this kind of castle building at the top of this hill. Uh, they will all they will all choose to run on the grass though, going downhill. I'm certain of it. Here we go then. And Ralph Street has a gap ahead of Mika Kirmala. It's like Martin Rayborn in third, and they do go round the gaps round here. There is here. We haven't seen him yet. Uh, there's not really too much, though, in terms of decision making, doesn't really matter too much on this uh, one to number six. But then there is an opportunity to go a different way to number seven. You can yeah. go, you should probably go through the middle and take yeah, this S bend through the middle of this course. Actually, courtyard. what the course planners think is the fastest. You go back out here again and then you take this entrance here, actually. There are only mm -hmm. a few runners taking it. 
Um, I think this is the fastest. I think they will win on it. And we will see those runners most probably slightly behind now. Let's see here. Let's see here, control number seven. Yes, yes, it is. And it's good to go through. Very good to go through. So the three who went through, really good for them. But there's still a lot of the course yet left to go, I think. Yeah, and they have a second loop as well. So they have an arena passage. So now there is a root choice here to control eight as well. Yeah, whether you go kind of through uh, this section, they've all been there before, they kind of know what it looks like. You can in the turn to the left here, or you can continue and turn left later on. I think it's a good choice to go in here already. So we have Robertson, we have Riek Born. I think it was Kibbutz there in third, yes indeed. And Foster in fourth, Street in fifth. Mika Kimler in six. Okay, so very soon then we're going to see them through this arena passage here before they, they have to do a map exchange, not map exchange, map flip, and then they go out on this really, really short second loop. They're all and very now close. You have a long way here where it's just physical. You can push really hard to get in front here. It's only a few controls left after this. Oh, but it's so close at this point. It's really, really close here still between these runners. But Tim Robertson being really active. He is leading the way through here. So they switch their map and they are all looking really closely here. But Tim Robertson has got a few meters ahead of Matthias Kibbert and Martin Regborn. And now they have a short first control on this second loop. And then, in my opinion, it's the last route choice towards control 11. And this will be quite decisive there. Yes, I think this will be really decisive. There's not really any, op there's only one real option to 12. I think only one good one anyway. No route choice to 13 and then it's all running. Still Robertson, Kibbutz here, Kibbutz. And now we see that they're splitting Ooh. up. I said it, it's the last chance here to choose a different route. Now and let's I see. don't think you want to go this way. I think you want to go the other way. And let's see, we will soon get the result of it. This is Robertson. Oh no, I think you do want to go this way. <laughs> I forgot which way. See the way. others there, Kibbutz going all the way around. Because if you go towards the right, it's in this yellow bit. You have to kind of uh, go back round. We do have a camera at this control, so we will, will see. will be interesting now. We have, have Robertson here, here. We, we have Kibbutz here, so it didn't really matter so much. Good punching there of Kibbutz. <laughs> and straight coming through the bushes. <laughs> And now it's uh, now mostly it physical towards the, the finish. Kibbutz taking the lead here. Yeah, and he's got a big gap then here. He's managed to go ahead of everybody else, I think. And then it's really close between and everybody else. It's really it. just about running from here. Okay, they're really, really fighting very hard here. Matthias Kibbutz is there. Martin Regborn, Tim Robertson. Oh, this is going to be a really, really good sprint finish there. Ralph Street off the back, he can't make it, but it's looking very good for Matthias Kibbert. There is um, second through to six, all close together. Let's have a look at the finish line. Who is going to make it? It's looking very good for the Swiss team. Matthias Kibbert winning his second World Cup knockout in a row. He is doing this really well. And it is a burn up. Tim Robertson, can he get another second place? He can. And August Mullane taking the third place, I think, then just ahead of Casper Fosser, taking it ahead of Kimmela and Fosser as well. So Kibbert, Robertson and Mullane as well. And it was very well done here. You could see that it wasn't the best decision by Kibbutz to went towards Control 11. He had a really good punching there when he kind of, yeah, he, he used this touch free very well. He wasn't really at the control. He was a few centimeters away, didn't go all the way and it felt really fast there. And then in the end, it, it just opened the gap and pushed really hard. He knew about his uh, physical strength there and could play it out very well. Also very well done of, of uh, August Molin here in one of his first World Cup, it, it must be, and uh, taking a medal here. So let's see here the recap. Um, here he was a bit behind Kibbutz, then this small mistake where everyone had to turn. Uh, here, and you could see again, um, they split it up quite often. They had the uh, individual choices here. Then they came all together up to control five. 
Here they split up again, keyboards going towards the stairs here, and then choosing the one, the option to the right, together with Casper Foster and August Malin. And then here, different route choices. It was better to go uh, through the building there, the passage. And then the last route choice before the map change, getting towards the arena. Still all of them together. And then now the very decisive part. Interesting here, the first control easy and then the different routes here, Robertson. With a good choice here, but the punching, it really was good. It was really good by Kibbutz. He was one second behind, but then made the difference here out of control 11 towards control 12 to control 13. And I think we will hear a few words of Kibbutz now very soon. We, I think we all had a joy following this final. How did you experience it out there? Yeah, <laughs> it was a tough course. All the time a bit changing the lead, some small mistakes from the leaders. So it was always changing position. Uh, yeah, and I'm really happy that at the end I had clear routes and an easy execution plan and this worked well. Yeah, and you seem to split up on the last loop. How did you experience that situation where Tim went the other way and, and you continued on your course? Yeah, this, it's always a really difficult situation, but I knew I have to focus on my own. I haven't checked this route, so I just uh, followed my plan. And we really came in at the same time to the third last control. And from there on, I knew it by hardware to go. So I think they also had a crash there, so that's why I, I got a small gap. So maybe they're a bit lucky, but I think... Uh, I could also have managed it the other way. <laughs> and there's World Championships in Denmark in just a month. What does it mean for your confidence to uh, win here in Sweden? Yeah, of course, it's uh, <laughs> great to win the last uh, test race. Uh, but on the other hand, it's also putting a bit pressure. Now I'm European champion. I won the last World Cup. So uh, I, I expect a good result in Denmark and I think a lot of others. So, yeah, but of course, it's better to win than to be placed second. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. He had a clear plan, he executed that plan, and he had an extra gear really coming out of the end there. Yeah, it was very interesting to hear that he didn't see the option or even check the option of Robertson. He was just, okay, I have my plan, I don't know where it's going, but I go the way I decided to. I have to do that, it will cost too much time to, um, yeah, to kind of change my mind. And also interesting to hear that yeah, from the third last control, he knew by heart where to go. He had to prepare that one. Even if you, I mean, you didn't have a lot of time to prepare it because you had to change, you yeah. had to switch the map. And it just gives you, he, he must have done it on the way to control 11 or 10. And that's really tough to do. So, yeah, well executed there. It's amazing how much information these top runners are able to take him so quickly and then remember and then execute just in this short space of time. But in this special occasion here, it wasn't too hard because it was really an easy second last control and it was an easy last control. So of yeah. course he could kind of, I mean, it was just left and right and then you were at the control more or less. But still you have to find the time to do that. Yeah. And that is really impressive. And and helps they'd already been there before. Anyway, it is the uh, same course then, I think, for the women. We will talk through uh, it as well. So a couple of route choices uh, early on and then again up this hill to number five. You could see that it was kind of messy towards control two with all the building stuff going on there. Different. You could, uh, there are actually a few route choices there as well. Then control six to seven, very good route if you go through the passage there between the buildings um, seven eight another route choice and as we have seen now it is important to read ahead if directly after switching the map and get an advantage a few seconds maybe from 11 to 12 where do you switch the map in that? Yeah, of course, you switch it at the very beginning of the runover. I mean, there you have a lot of time as well. You switch it, it even as you're coming out of eight when you I, see I the I don't night. really think you dare to do that, okay. but you know that you have a lot of time running up the stairs. I mean, you have been running there, you have seen the yeah, you know where, where, like. the, where the lane is splitting up into the second loop and the finish, and I think you can switch the map at, yeah, you do it when you punch the last control of the first loop. 
All right, then let's have a look then at the lineup for this women's final. Not any uh, difficulties here, but what a strong, strong field. We have Lena Strand, Carolyn Olsen, Andrina Benjaminson, Tova Alexanderson, Hannah Lundberg, and Megan Carter Davis. And we saw two heats really where there were big gaps at the uh, the start of the field with Tova Alexanderson and Hannah Lundberg both having really big gaps over the rest of the field. Lena Strand and Carolyn Olsen had to fight for it a lot more to be the ones who would make it through. So all sorts of, I'm sure, emotions and uh, feelings on this start line with all their different experiences and for even to make it through, for, for both the finals, to make it through even to the final. The competition is so intense. Uh, when you get to the semi-final stage, it's just uh, really fantastic for them. And of course, they'll kind of know they didn't have to make a choice here. They, they may there may still be loops here that, you know, they don't know that they're all going the same way. But obviously, once you open your map up, you can tell very quickly what it is going to be. Okay, last few seconds then, ready for this start. The camera needs to get out of the way because they're really soon going to have this women start. Oh. Last few seconds. See who takes the medal. Is it half of these women will take a medal then here at this knockout sprint final. And Hannah Lundberg goes to the front, followed by Megan Carter Davis and then Tova Alexanderson. I mean, it's, she's still a junior, and we have seen that in the semi final. She wants to take the lead, she wants to be up there, she wants to go and do her own race here, take her own decisions, and I think that's really good to see. And you can see, was it Lena Strand there who kind of uh, hung off the back? Um, really kind of watching to see where everybody else went there. And, you know, she's maybe less, spent less energy and she's, she's, she's not lost much pace behind the ones at the start. But this year, now it's a bit difficult. You run into the con control, you have to back out, you have to find, you have to work your way to the control when the others come back. So sometimes it's really good to be in the lead in the beginning already. It's less nervous. You have a bit more time to prepare the second control. But of course, you can prepare the second control towards the first control as well. So it's always uh, everything has advantages and disadvantages, of course. Yeah, and they all drop down in that same direction. It looks like uh, Lundberg, Tover Alexanderson, and Carter Davis still at the front. And they really like to see that. I mean, Hannah Lundberg, she's really taking her own decisions. You could see it here. Tove Alexanderson, maybe the best orienteer, female orienteer. The last year is going to the left. She continues, executes the route she has decided on beforehand. That's really good to see. And those three small gap, a little bit of small gap over Carolyn Olsen then in fourth at this point. And they're all just reading this route here. Oh, now they split up. Mm -hmm. It's a bit surprising when you run around the corner here. There is a fence, you can see it on the map, but it is quite big and it looks like a, you can see it here. It looks, when you come there on the map, of course, it's you can jump over, uh, but it is higher than expected. Mm -hmm. It really is, it really is. And now, now they split up and go these different routes. Carter Davis will probably go head back towards control number two. Well, no, she doesn't. She will take this route round in the middle, I think. I think that's I think a it's good, pretty that's okay. A good okay, now they've got to come Let's up this it. hill. Here she is on this right hand side. The others where? will come from the other direction. Yeah, where are the others? They will be on the other they side of the shot. It's a good decision by Megan Carter Davis. You can also see that a few of the others were running away to the left on this. Uh, area. I think it's better to, to stay to the left here, the way where Tuve was, if you leave to the right from the control. Yeah, I think that was definitely a good op good option. Yeah, if you stay stay to uh, the left of the camera picture just now. Mm, you can see a small gap there between Olsen and uh, Lina Strand. Okay, then they head back down this hill. There's a few different route choices to take on this way to controls number six, but I don't think any of them really make too much of a difference, to be honest. So Tova Alexanderson now a little bit gather gap over Lundberg, but Carter Davis is out in the lead at the moment. Didn't see where Carter Davis went. Yes, she stopped there. So all of them taking the same route. And then to the next one. 
There's this good option, backing out from the control again. Use this small passage right after control and run between the buildings to control seven. We have seen that in men's race. It was a good option. Carter no. Davis choosing to go the way where we see. Does anybody go through? Not Same yet. Here. Does Lundberg go through? No, nope. nobody's seen that option yet. That is interesting. We haven't seen which way everybody's taken. Benny Minson goes round. It was whether we saw Strand and Olsen go round or going through. But here then is our leader, Megan Carter Davis, just Some getting that last hesitating one. Hesitating there. A little bit of a hesitation. And then they've been through this section. So Lundberg in third, uh, Benjaminson fourth, Olsen in fifth. So Strand then, who took a silver medal in the individual sprint. She is off the back at the moment in sixth place. And now we see they do have a route choice again through to number eight. We expect them probably to kind of go wiggle through this way where they had control number two on the semi-final. They have been here before. They kind of know what it looks like. Yeah, and uh, as expected, Cart Davis turning up there using the small steps towards the control. Here she is. You can also see that the gap is slightly smaller now. Yeah, I guess Alex Anderson has managed to catch up a few steps, but then there is a now big gap here, bigger gap towards Lindbergh and Benjaminson still hot on the heels of the Swedes. So third, fourth and fifth, very close. So now it's a fairly easy control then into number nine and we have this arena passage through here and then just this small little loop now, this last part part where you've really got to keep your head. It will be interesting to see if Court Davis is trying to kind of push hard here to let the gap grow or if she's kind of letting Alexanderson getting in contact again. I mean, she's very uh, special position to be in really, to be leading through this, uh, this uh, knockout sprint final, to be the best in the world. And she takes the arena passage in the lead. Alexanderson is looking really strong to now catch up as well. Now it's only four controls left. We have this quite easy first one, control number 10, and then we have the root choice, the final root choice of this course, to course towards control 11. But both of those runners looking super, super relaxed. I don't think Alexanderson's really managed to catch up any distance. It's, the gap is kind of the same for me. But do they split up or do they go this same way around? It actually doesn't look too different, I think, from what we saw Kibberts do. So what happens with these two runners? Be very interesting Carter Davis now. will go straight on. So will Alexanderson. You either got to go up these steps here or up the, the track. Mm, interesting now. Ben will too will start to push and really try to close the gap here. You could stay closer to that building there. Yeah, you could have cut that uh, around the corner, but you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to hit the old man who's uh, in the way. So there's still this gap. We have seen that gap for quite a few minutes now. You've got to come in here. You've got to be really distinct as you go the way through. Alexanderson maybe catching up a few meters by just cutting through there. Then you've got to go kind of round and back in on yourself to get to this control number 11. 12 is much easier than it's all about the running. So um, uh, Carter Davis is still in the lead, but Alexanderson is there. Benjamin Minson now into third place. I think she's pulled up. And now it's really Ooh, just running left here. And here we have to fight between Alexanderson and Carter Davis. So Alexanderson in the lead. She's just overtaken the Brits then. And they're on their way to the control number 12. They've got around this corner. Benya Minson there, she is fighting for third place currently. And I got the feeling that Alexanderson was slightly better prepared for this final part here, pushing very hard to the second last control. And we lost Hannah Lundberg. I don't know where, what happened to her because she was really, really close to Benya Minson here. Uh, but she hasn't managed to do anything here. So we will see the two leaders here. Tova Alexanderson, she is going to take another gold medal here at the uh, Home World Cup. Tova Alexanderson has just been in the right position the whole way. I want to see who's in third place as well. But Tova Alexanderson soon to round the corner. Here she is. She can celebrate here on this line. Going to take a second consecutive gold. I mean, and what a fantastic result as well for Megan Carter Davis. She takes her first ever medal on the World Cup. Amazing result from Megan Carter Davis and Andrina Benny Minton. Maybe a little bit disappointed with her sprint result. And she's really done well. It's a fight out here, Lena Strand.
is here. She's just overtaken Caroline Olsen. And what has happened to Hannah Lundberg? She is in sixth place. She was right up there fighting for the medals. And ultimately, it will be sixth place for her. Uh, taking condolences, a uh, shake of the head there from uh, Hannah Lundberg. But the winner really, it was Tova Alexanderson again. She she wasn't leading all the way around, but she had enough in the tank to just have that extra gear. She was so well prepared for this last loop and was just able to take that distance ahead of Megan Carter Davis. And I think also that it was kind of a matter of experience. You could really see how precise Alexanderson was in her orienteering in the very end when she was just cutting the corners a little bit better. You could feel that Megan Carver Davis kind of got this feeling of I'm in the lead, I can take it home now, but I have to, I, I just don't want to miss. And it was like, it felt that she was losing a little bit of this attacking style in orienteering. But of course it was very well executed uh, during the whole course. And I really like to see that in the end, in both the women's and the men's race, we had the ones winning who had like the best preparation for the finish, very active orienteering all the way. And I mean, in that way, it's really not necessary to have any forkings on a sprint mm. relay or on a knockout sprint if you have runners who really want to go for the victory and not only for a top three. This is really great route choice here from Megan Carter Davis. And, mm -hmm. and it's been, you could, I mean, when you're in that last loop with the multi world champion, I mean, it's hard to back yourself against her, but Megan Carter Davis is such a humble, unassuming person. She's incredibly modest. She works so hard with her training. And it's such a delight to see her step it up. I think I remember the last or, or the, one, the one before that, the knockout sprint where she had a really good progression to the semi-final and she didn't make it. I want to see what Hannah Lundberg does. See here, she's running in here, somewhere here we must have lost her. Let's see where it happens. No problem here. Ah, she just... What? No problems. Oh, yeah. She's all still in position here. See, here she is still in third position. And you see that Benjaminsen... So there, they're kind of together. Lina Strand quite far behind. Caroline Olsson at this part of the, this part of the race. So it must have been here somewhere. Control 10 or 11. You also see that still... Megan Carter Davis is in the lead. Lundberg just dropping back now, I guess. Maybe she runs out of gas. She must have done a mistake somewhere. I think yeah, here, yeah. here it is, yeah, just, just hesitating. And she wasn't really prepared for that. You no. could see that the others, they had a clear plan here. And you can also see that Karlin Olsson that is not. Not she was so good at making those mm. final choices in the semi-final, but not in the final. Okay, let's hear from Tova Alexanderson, the winner. So Tova, another victory for you today. How did you experience the final? Yeah, it was a really exciting final. Uh, in the beginning of the race, I just wanted to be a little bit yeah, more in the group, stay together. Uh, but uh, I was second and... Uh, uh, but uh, then Hannah just yeah, had a stop. She, yeah, so I was first, and uh, it was one route chase uh, where uh, we lost a little bit. So uh, yeah, then I just had to catch, and uh, I took a meter. I was looking at the route chase, but she always took the same as I also had planned. So I was, uh, I didn't want to do another route chase. Just uh, so I was just taking the same and catch some meters for meters and then I, I knew that so that it was quite much running in the end so when I was sure now it's just to run the last then I yeah just gave everything I had so yeah yeah I'm so satisfied and it was a really exciting race and a tough fight hard fight <laughs> And were you afraid that Megan might win today? She had the lead uh, at the final loop. 
<laughs> afraid, afraid. I, <laughs> it's of course, it's. Uh, I like her and it's uh, hard fights, and uh, I know that she's really, really strong. And everyone in this final is someone that to be afraid of because everyone is really strong. So, uh, of course, I have a big respect for her, and I also know that she's really strong in the end. So, I was for sure not sure to take it. So it was just a game give exactly everything I had. <laughs> and now you've had two World Cup wins out of two races. What does that... Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, I think we are... I think we're done there with the interview. I mean, for her to say... What an unusual situation for Tova Alexanderson. And she's so used to dominating so much. It actually might be quite unusual and exciting to be pushed for it right till the end. But you know... You really got the feeling also in this interview that she likes it. She yeah, likes it to yeah, be challenged. Yeah, she likes completely. the situation that there is someone challenging her on the last meters and that she, yeah, as she said, that I try to gain meter by meter, win back second by second, and you could feel like, okay, I like this. I take the challenge. I want to be the best. I want to overtake her on the very end in the physical part. And uh, it's good to see yeah, it's good to see her in action like this. Yeah, it's good to see that, yeah, she can be in that unusual situation and still perform absolutely amazingly and and have that have that conviction to the end. And it was really interesting to 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 hear her say that Megan was taking kind of like the same route choices that that she'd planned to do, but she didn't kind of get put off by that. She was still sticking with her plan and not trying to go a different way to catch up. Yeah, you could see that she's not getting into an into a defensive position there. She okay, she takes the same, I still take the same. I don't have to risk anything. And that's of course uh, kind of something that shows her self confidence. Absolutely. So we'll have the uh, then flower ceremony for the uh, top three the for the men's and the women's. It is another Zia silver men for Tim Robertson. He should really be really proud of his performance uh, already in this um, in this World Cup. Of course, he won't, uh, I hope he's able to make up a sprint relay team. I'm not sure that there are enough competitors from New Zealand. But the winner here. Oh, just a burst of speed, the great position he was able to put himself in right at the end was really fantastic. And the, the, that information that we got from him at the end, that he had been able to really plan that last section, he was in the great position to, to be there and to be putting all of his energy into his running. Had that turn of speed at the end, we know he's been in great, really, really great form. Uh, for this race, um, you know, uh, over the season he's had a good winter. I mean, it just bring him in with confidence and awesome. another World Cup, it's another win for the knockout. It's interesting to hear him talking about the pressure that's coming now, Ooh, yeah. not only from himself because he knows that he's in a good situation, but also, of course, from everyone around. At the same time, we haven't seen Wojtek Kral. Uh, yes. A few years ago, yes. we would have said he is the big favorite. Yeah, now he would. wasn't running here, so... Yeah, we haven't seen Wojtek Kralo and Milos Nikodim. Well, no, no, we wouldn't count necessarily Milos Nikodim, but yeah, we haven't... Wojtek uh, Kralo wasn't running here today, but... Yeah, but when you have his tactics, this head-to-head, -head, you know, you don't want to be the favorite. You know, there is a there is team... I don't know, do you? Like, is there team tactics? Is there, my, can feeling you is, my feeling is Tuve likes it to be the favorite. Yeah, she, she, she likes does. to play with this. She likes there's to be challenged. Games that come um, but of course, she's also so dominating, and there's no one in the men's uh, in the men's Her heat that's so dominating and having the self, Andrea like the self confidence she can have in the race. So that's it's a difference here. Well, Andrea Benny Minson put herself in such a good spot, and then she didn't. Um, she didn't panic when Hannah Lundberg made that mistake around her. Megan Carter Davis really put herself into good position from the beginning of the race. And it was that route choice up the hill to control number five where she put herself into contention. And it was her and this woman, Tova Alexanderson, neck and neck together around the rest of the course. But another gold, another gold from Tova Alexanderson. Really, really class. 
on all the terrain. She just continues her dominance, even though she is now starting to be pushed by other people in the field. So there are the top three then for this uh, women's knockout sprint. And we will uh, then say goodbye now from this uh, live broadcast of the Knockout Sprint. We will be back uh, tomorrow for a fantastic sprint relay. Lots of different uh, teams for each nation. It's going to be really, really fast and really, really furious. Even just the team selections. Goodness me, I wouldn't want to be uh, the uh, Swedish team leaders at this point at all. But congratulations to everybody who has uh, performed well today. We will be back ready for this sprint. Sprint relay tomorrow. See you tomorrow.